So over the holidays, I handmade and gifted these beautiful blankets, and now I will be showing you how I did it. I hope you learn something new and enjoy this video. Okay, so first I'm going to do the slip knot. And when you do the slip knot, you want to cross it over just like this. So I'm going to cross it over and then I'm going to flip it like this. So let me just do this one more time. I'm going to cross it over just like a ribbon, um, just like a breast cancer awareness ribbon. And then I'm going to flip it over like this. Once I do that, I'm going to grab the loop with my two fingers and pull it through. So I should have a knot that looks just like this. I'm gonna do that one more time. So you're gonna cross it over just like a breast cancer awareness ribbon and then cross it over one more time. Now I have this long piece, which is my working string going to grab my working string and pull it through. So I should have a knot like this. This knot is going to be the rhythm for the rest of the blanket. So this is gonna be how big your stitch is gonna be. I like, I like mine um, fairly big. I've tried to do really small ones, really tight ones, but I don't like them as much. So I have my slip stitch set just like this. I'm going to move it over this way and I'm going to pull my working string and the working string is the long string. So I'm going to pull my, my working string this way and then I'm going to get my working string and I'm going to pull it through, pull it through my slip stitch so I have it looking just like this. Now I'm gonna get my working string once again. And always make sure that your working string is always on um, the same side. So you don't pull it through and then have it on this side and then have it on this side. It stays on the same side. So I'm gonna pull this through. And then I'll just kind of pull it out like this. And just make sure that it's the same width as the one right beside it. Um, if you are really particular on it, which I was when I first started, uh, you could get a measuring tape and you can measure it as you move along. I've kind of got the idea already, so I kind of know I pull a little bit here and I pull a little bit there. So I'm just going to make a chain with this working string. I'm pulling it through, pulling it through, Move a little bit over this way. Pull it through. I'm gonna get this, pull it under, pull it through. Now it just depends how big you're wanting your blanket. I usually use four skeins for a baby blanket. I use six skeins for a throw, um, and it just doubles by two, so I use eight for a full size, and then um, I use 10 for a queen, I use 12 for a king, and then I use anywhere from 14 to 16 for a California king. So I base my prices on um, how much work I'm doing, and how many skeins I'm using, obviously. Now by skeins, um, this is what a skein is. This is what I use right here. Keep in mind as you are creating your chain that um, the chain is going to be the width of the blanket. So you can always add on in length, but this is going to be your width. So if you are going to I usually use, I just um, moved my table, but I use about half of the table um, because I like my blankets nice and big. Okay, so I have created my chain um, at any time if I'm working too fast on this video, just go on ahead and pause it or um, go back 
and um, slow it down. So I'm right at the end of my chain, which is right here, and my working string is right over here. I'm going to go under and I'm going to pull through and I'm going to switch my working string. So my working string is right now on the left hand side. I'm going to twist it so that it's on the right hand side. So I'm going to pull it through and it's going to move over this way. So now I'm going to get my whole, my whole um, skein. And I like to move my skein as I work. So I'm going to be moving over to the right hand side. So I'm going to move all of my yarn over to the right hand side. I'm going to pull this through. And as I'm pulling down, I'm pulling, I'm pulling downward because I'm at the end of my chain here. So I'm pulling down here. Now each little loop, and I'm going to zoom in here in just a bit. So as I mentioned, I'm going to go right next to that, which is this one right here. And I'm going to go under and pull through so that it's down just like this. I'm going to go to the next one, which is this one right here. I'm going to come under here, loop under. I'm going to pull these loops out and stretch them a little bit. And they're going to come facing towards me. Now, don't be too particular. You can always stretch them out. Um, I'm going to move over to the next. Our workable yarn is this way so I'm going to move my loop when I come in through here I'm going to move my loop so that my workable yarn is going the opposite way so since I'm going when since I went to the right I'm now coming to the left my workable yarn is going to be coming to the left hand side so I'm going to pull through making sure that my yarn is on the left hand side once again, I'm grabbing all of my yarn and I'm moving it to the left hand side. Just makes things easier. I'm gonna pull through each of these holes that I have just created. So I'm going to pull through, allowing my workable yarn. Okay, so basically this is just going back and forth, back and forth um, and really that's all there is to it. I'm gonna bring my workable string back this way. Okay, I'm gonna grab um, what's left of my yarn. I'm going to grab it, throw it to the other side.
eventually you'll run out of yarn so I get another skein of yarn and I just mesh it together and hand sew it. Okay, so when you are done with the blanket, um, you have this piece left over, and I just sewed this piece on. Um, if you end in the middle, just unravel and um, just have a complete set. So I have my workable yarn right here, and I'm gonna tug at it a little bit so that this loop is just a little bit bigger than all the other loops. I'm going to get this loop, and I'm gonna twist it and then I'm going to get the loop right next to it. So if you can see the loop right next to it. And this, this loop, I'm gonna come in and grab this loop, just like that. Then I'm gonna get this loop, it's open right here. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to grab the loop right beside it. So I'm going to get this loop I'm going to grab the loop right beside it and I'm going to pull it through. Get this loop. Pull it through. This loop, pull it through. And as you can see, it's going to start to um, stitch off just like this and it looks like, it looks like the um, beginning part of it. So you're just getting the loops and pretty much you're just crossing them over. Getting the loops, intertwining them and crossing them over. Getting the loops, intertwining and crossing them over. So when you are completely done and you're completely done locking it, you will have to um, hand stitch four sides and you have this side first where your loop is coming out. And what I usually do or what I have done is um, I got this at a craft store and it's a little tag that says made with love. I usually give that to family. I also have some that say handmade and I give those to um, the blankets that I have sold. So you're gonna cut the end off just like this. And the next, it really is just up to you, but what I like to do is I like to stitch right in through here. So I like to pull this up so that it almost looks seamless, just like that. I've already threaded my needle so I'm going to get this piece right here and I'm going to stitch it right up on here so it looks like it's just meant to be right there to go around usually I like to lock the stitch so you just move it in like this and lock it 
And then right on this corner, I will slide the Made With Love on there and stitch that piece in. Piece looks like when it's um, all done, and I usually I get really really particular with this. I'll go in with my seam ripper, and I'll rip off um, just these little ends right here, so you don't see those. But um, this is this is how it looks closed off. Okay, so now I am on the other side of the blanket. I've just capped off um, this side, and now I have this end right here. So just like the end that I worked on on the other side, I'm going to flap this over and this is going to be stitched right here so that it's an invisible seam. Again, it's gonna be a hand stitch. So it's just gonna go in through. And then looped around. Okay, so here is the third and last part which is where you begin your hook. And this will be hand sewn also. You're just gonna pull this across. And this is going to be uh, another invisible stitch right in through here. fold it over one more time. I'm gifting this blanket to my auntie. It is, um, it's her birthday today. So, this will be hers. Now I'm going to roll it, and again, not stretching. I'm just kind of lifting it as I go so it doesn't stretch the stitch, so it appears fuller. And so I'll just roll the blanket up, just like that. Then at the very end, I get ribbon that, um, usually ribbon that people like or, or that matches. Give her Anthony. You can say hi. Then I pull this up, I make sure that it's equal. Hi. That's my little baby boy being silly. I make sure that it's equal. And I don't get, I'm not really too fancy on this. I used to work. Um, at a spa for several years and the bows that they used to make were so super fancy, but this is just kind of a simple, simple bow. I don't really have anything spect spectacular. I'll just tighten it like this and then just create a nice, simple bowl. And then I tug at it right when I feel like the loops are where they should be. I keep tugging at it until I feel like it looks it looks right. We're almost there. I'm very picky. Okay. 
Okay, so when I'm done with that, I will cut the ribbon at an angle just to give it that bow appearance. And I like them to be a little bit slightly uneven, just because I think it looks prettier that way. Then I get a lighter, and be very careful with this. I get a lighter, and um, I just run the ends back and forth quickly. And this is really beneficial to whoever's going to use this because sometimes they love the bow and they're like, oh, I want to reuse that. But um, they're not able to because it unravels quickly. In this case, they're able to use the bow once again. So here's the finished and non-finished. Just burn the ends off. So here it is. This is the finished product. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you learned something.